गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स नेक्स्ट टॉपिक इज ऑर्थोगनल प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ लेगोर्स पॉलिनोमियल विच इज इंटेग्रल जीरो टू इन्फिनिटी ई रेस टू पार माइनस एक्स एल एन एक्स एल एम एक्स एंड दिस इंटेग्रल मस्ट बी जीरो इफ दीज आर अन इक्वल एंड इफ दे आर इक्वल देन द इंटेग्रल इज वन और वी कैन राइट द स्टेटमेंट इन दिस वे जीरो फॉर एम एंड एन आर डिफरेंट एंड इफ दे आर इक्वल इट्स वैल्यू इज वन and we are going to prove this result using generating formula generating formula means summation n vary from 0 to infinity l nx into t raised to power n is exponential function this one and for lm we take another variables as sin m to replace this so we get the another uh, expression for generating formula of lmx now we have uh, to write these two values here that means we have to multiply these two naming this as 1 and 2 and when we multiply it will be double summation n vary from 0 to infinity and m vary from 0 to infinity l nx into l mx and t raised to power n s raised to power m multiplying these two will get us this and on the other side if we multiply these two e raised to power something and here also e raised to power something uh, when we multiply these two term they their power will be added so it will be e raised to power minus x uh, it can be common because x exist in both this minus also so it is t upon 1 minus t plus s upon 1 minus s at uh, the term in the denominator when it is multiplied it will be 1 minus t into 1 minus s so we get this thing that we need here and now we have to multiply both side by e raised to power minus x and integrating between 0 to infinity with respect to x now we are going to write this multiplying both sides by e raised to power minus x and integrating between the limit x is equal to 0 to x is equal to infinity what we get here it will be integral 0 to infinity and summation will be as it is and vary from 0 to infinity m vary from 0 to infinity e raised to power minus x is multiplied here ln and lm are as it is i am omitting x just for the sake of convenience with respect to x we integrate this on the other side when uh, we multiply with e raised to power minus x here you can see if i multiply it with e raised to power minus x again the base are same so the powers will be added and when we add this again minus x will be common so it will be minus x into t upon 1 minus t plus s upon 1 minus s plus 1 one more power we multiply this and we have to take the integral from 0 to infinity with respect to x and the term in the denominator 1 minus t and 1 minus s will be same so now the this is all now we have to uh, solve this thing now integrating this side with respect to x so this is constant term which will be outside the bracket the integral of e raised to power minus x is same and while putting the values of the limit 0 and infinity infinity will make this thing 0 and 0 will make it 1 so this will be 0 minus and the minus here uh, will balance the minus sign of the lower limit 1 upon this coefficient of x now 1 minus t 1 minus s as it is and here when we take the lcm 1 minus t 1 minus s plus t into 1 minus s plus s into 1 minus t and in the numerator the this term will be 1 minus t into 1 minus s will cancel out with this thing so we are left with 1 and after multiplying this 1 minus s minus t plus s t plus t minus s t plus s minus s t so plus s t minus s t will cancel s t 
cancel so we will get 1 1 upon 1 minus st which can be written as 1 minus st raised to power minus 1 and using the binomial expansion which is 1 plus st plus st square plus st cube and so on this is the binomial expansion which can be written as summation and vary from 0 to infinity as and t power n so which can be written as n vary from 0 to infinity s raised to power n t raised to power n on the this side if we compare the coefficient of t raised to power into s raised to power n what we will get the coefficient of comparing coefficient of t raised to power n and s raised to power m which is here this coefficient coefficient of this is integral uh, 0 to infinity e raised to power minus x ln x lmx dx this is the coefficient of this term on the left hand side this is the coefficient after expanding this so on the other hand there is no term uh, which has different power means the, all the powers of s and t are same on this side so this uh, is equal to 0 for n and m different for m not is equal to n so this term will be 0 if these are equal means the coefficient of ln x ln x dx means this is the coefficient of t raised to power n s raised to power n so t raised to power s raised to power n the coefficient is 1 so this is 1 for n is equal to m so this is our proof for orthogonal property for Lagorde's polynomial which is very important if we use the alternate expression for Lagorde's polynomial which is ln x is equal to summation r vary from 0 to n minus 1 raised to power r n factorial square x raised to power r upon n minus r factorial into r factorial square this is for when we use c naught as n factorial so this is the alternative expression its generating formula formula will be summation ln x t raised to power n upon n factorial we will have n factorial here and on the generating formula the other side will be same minus x t upon 1 minus t upon 1 minus t so generating formula is same but here we will get n factorial and for this um, orthogonal property for this function orthogonal property will be 0 to infinity e raised to power minus x ln x into lmx right dx will be equal to n factorial m factorial into delta mn and delta mn is equal to 1 if m is equal to n and it is 0 when m is not equal to n so that give us the uh, orthogonal property for the alternate expression of ln x uh, now this very important result that fx is a polynomial of degree m and we have to show that fx can be written as this summation where cr is a constant term and lr is Lagorde's polynomial of degree r where cr is given by this formula the integral formula now what we have been given that fx is a polynomial of degree n. The polynomial of degree n is of this type. We write this. Now we also know that the, uh, that the uh, Lagorde's polynomial can also be written as a polynomial of degree m with the different coefficients. Now what we will do, we will multiply this polynomial by am and divide by km. Multiply and divide by this number. So when we do this, km will cancel and here it will be am. When we subtract these two fx minus this thing, multiplying by this number and subtracting, this uh, highest degree term will cancel. The coefficient of x raised to power m will be same, so they will cancel. So either the all the term will cancel, either everything is 0 
if uh, this whole term is zero, then f x can be written as this thing, and this is constant. So f x is something constant into l r. So that give us the proof, right? If uh, the everything becomes zero after subtracting this, if that is not the case the otherwise if this is not zero then if these two term, term cancel so the other term are of lesser degree of degree m minus 1 so we get a polynomial of degree m minus 1 which we name at as g m minus 1 after subtracting these two after cancelling these two term the rest of the term are of degree m minus 1 now taking this term to the other side we'll get fx as Uh, we name this as C M. So this is A M upon K M. We name it C M, right? We have taken this. So this uh, is the expression for f x. We name it as number three, right? Now what we will do that as we have done this for f x. Similarly, now we take G M minus one in place of f x and repeat the same procedure. What procedure? We, as we multiply l m by a m upon k m, now we will multiply l m by k uh, a m minus one upon k m minus one to cancel this term because the terms uh, of g m minus one will be of degree m minus one. So we will cancel this term like we have done for f x. So uh, again, we will have the same type of thing. That g m minus one can be written as like, proceeding as above. Uh, taking g minus m, uh, g m minus one in place of f x, so g m minus one is c m minus one, l m minus one, and g m minus g m minus two will be there. And putting this value here, we get f x as this thing. And again, repeating the same procedure for g m minus two. Now you can write f x as the summation, the summation which can be written as sum. R vary from R or S. I have taken here S vary from zero to M, A M, uh, C S into L S. Right. This is the summation. Now for this thing we have proven f x written as summation. This you can write R or S because it is the variable. Whether you take S vary from zero to M or R vary from zero to M, both means the same. Now we have to derive the result for C R. For this, what we will do, we will multiply this f x both side by e raised to power minus x into l r x. Both side we multiply with this term. So now, we, if we multiply both side by e raised to power minus x l r x, and integrating between the limit x is equal to zero to x is equal to infinity, we get this because we have only f x on this side. So we multiply with this two term and. Uh, integrating on the other hand we will uh, we have this summation cs and lx we multiply with this term and integrating now we have use uh, here the formula for orthogonal property which is zero or one according to these two are same or not so this value will be zero if both are not equal and if it they are equal then it is One. So what we will do? We will put s is equal to zero, one, two, three, and at some place when s is equal to r, that value will be one. Other values will be zero. So all these values are zero or one. It is one at only one place when s become equal to r. So when s become equal to r, this will become c r because this other term will become one. So it is only c r. So what is c r? C r is this integral on the other side. so that is what we get here that fx can be written as summation cr lrx where r vary from 0 to m and cr is given by this formula